Hello again. The policies that we've talked about so far have been, in general, very, very general policies, you know, for almost any sort of a commercial environment or a military environment. Today we're going to talk about a much more specific policy. It's called the Chinese Wall Policy. Okay, so what's the idea? Um, well, these guys, Brewer and Nash, came up with this policy in 1989, and they said, well, can we come up with a policy to solve a very specific problem? The, the problem in this case is, suppose that you have a lawyer working for a number of different clients, right? If the lawyer works for, say, Ford Motor Company, uh, and then wants to go work for GM, there may be a potential conflict of interest there because uh, in moving from Ford to GM, he may carry some Ford proprietary information that might disadvantage Ford with respect to GM. But if he goes and works for McDonald's, no problem, because those two are not competing. So the idea is, how do you come up with a security policy or a model that captures this sort of a situation and says what can and can't be done within that context? Okay, so this is called the Chinese Wall Policy, and it attempts to address this sort of thing. Strictly speaking, this is not an integrity policy, though it has some integrity aspects. It's more a confidentiality access control policy. So how does it work? Well, the way they model this was, you can imagine three levels of, of entities or objects within the system. So you have the standard objects, which is files and things like that, that the, the lawyer or consultant or whoever might have access to. You have a set of company groups. So for example, all the files associated with GM and all the files associated with Ford and all the files associated with McDonald's. And then you have a set of conflict classes. And what the conflict classes are, are sets of company names of companies which directly compete with one another. So for example, here I have Ford, Chrysler, and GM in one conflict class because those are all car companies and compete with one another. And then Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Citicor, those are all banks. And then Microsoft, and you know, nobody competes with Microsoft. So what's the idea? Well, we have an access control policy uh, which constrains how a consultant can move from one of these companies to the other. And the idea is you can move between conflict classes, but you can't move within a conflict class. So you, you shouldn't go from Chrysler to Ford, for example, or from Citibank to Bank of America, but it's okay to go from Ford to Bank of America. Um, and so the, what's the idea? I, if you access a, f a file from one of these companies, then you shouldn't access files from one of their direct competitors, but you can move to a different conflict class. So notice uh, that unlike many of the previous policies that we've looked at, here the permissions change dynamically depending upon the history of the uh, transactions that you've taken or the accesses that you've done. So for example, um, you know, if I've previously accessed, say, Citibank and Ford, I can't access anything in either of those two conflict classes, but I can go to, to McDonald's, say. All right, so as with many of these policies, they came up with some fancy rules to describe this, which uh, have kind of familiar names, in particular the simple security rule and the star property. The simple security rule is about what I can read, as always, and the star property is about what I can write. And I don't really want to go through these, but they're fairly standard. The idea is to keep information from flowing within a conflict class. Okay, you can, information can flow within a company and can flow from one conflict class to another. The, the, the star property is a little bit interesting uh, and a little hard to understand at first. What it tries to preclude is, uh, say, a consultant taking, say, Ford's information and writing it into, say, Citicorp's files, and then somebody else might come along later on who's working for, say, Chrysler, and read that information. And so that's why this rule is, is designed to prevent a, a flow using uh, another company's files as sort of an intermediary, um, and then thereby flow information within a class. Okay, so what have we said today? We said that unlike previous policies, uh, Brewer and Nash's Chinese wall policy is designed to d address a very specific security problem. Uh, that is, uh, conflicts of interest by a consultant or a contractor moving from one company to another. Um, and this illustrates that not only 
our security policies able to solve these very general problems, but we're also able to write policies that can solve fairly specific problems. And the Chinese wall policy is such a, is such a policy. It's a specific access control policy designed to solve this particular problem. And unlike many of the other policies we've looked at, it uh, is sensitive to the history of what you've done in the past. Thank you.